Take Mr. Bob Lewis. Okay. Mr. Lewis, first on that list. Come up, please. Come out. So. <clears throat> How are you today? Good. You want to state your name and uh, your address, please, for the record. Bob, Bob Lewis, uh, 1094 Morning Walk, Depot Bay, 97341. Mr. Lewis, can you tell us why you're interested in this position? Well, my wife and I searched for a place to retire for a year. We looked all over the United States between the wife. <clears throat> We've been to uh, several times. We were looking for a, a small town on the coast. We both grew up around the world. And uh, we lived in Alaska for 35 years. And we came down here and we fell in love with the place. We couldn't wait to move. So, January 29th, 2013, we landed in Depot Bay for good with our two dogs and our furniture on the way. And we just love this place. We love the, uh, the atmosphere, the, uh, the people, uh, the small businesses. We were small business owners for 20 years. And uh, we just want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of it, the growth, and uh, get involved in, in what you do. You know, the harbor, fishing, small businesses. How is being out of small business? How is that? How is being out of small business? How is being out of small business? Well, you said you retired from small business. Yeah, we had, we had a coffee company for 20 years. Uh, my wife opened it in 92, and I was a, uh, a sales rep covering the state of Alaska for a very large consumer products company. And uh, she was starting to have more fun than I was. So I, I took a retirement package from them and uh, joined her in 94 and bought a roaster and we roasted coffee and sold it to other espresso places throughout Alaska uh, for 20 years and we sold it in 2011. And um, we were up there and, and uh, it just wasn't fun anymore. We wanted to get out but we didn't know where and that's when we found Depot Bay. Uh -huh. I see you were a candidate for Alaska State Legislature. <laughs> yes. How did that work out? I lost by 125 votes out of 12,000. Mm -hmm. Out of 12,000 votes cast? Mm -hmm. Wow. That's it, pretty impressive. 
Well, it was devastating to lose. Right. <laughs> I mean, we uh, I campaigned for for months and months, and, and you know, fundraising, going fundraisers, and meeting people, and everything, and uh, rubbing shoulders with the other state legislatures. They thought I was going to win, and I didn't. And I'll tell you, after I lost, it was like somebody threw a switch. The phone quit ringing, <laughs> <laughs> and and the dinner invitations quit coming, and the meetings and all that. Uh, but it was an eye-opening experience. It was a lot of fun, but it sure is tough to lose. How do you plan on um, learning what you need to know about your uh, legal responsibilities and liabilities should you, be, should you get the appointment? Mm -hmm. um, I've been reading the... Uh, See what should I say? I forget the term you use for it. Not the bylaws, but but the uh, things that form the, the city. The ordinances. The or well, the ordinances, but uh, the charter. The charter, uh -huh. and that's one way I would familiarize myself with it. I read uh, Oregon state laws uh, to find out what applies there. I was a real estate agent for two years before we moved down here, so I understand how uh, breakdown between between state and local laws works. And uh, so I would familiarize myself with that. I know there's a certain legal responsibility, and uh, I notice that you, uh, you abide by, uh, according to the charter, you abide by Robert's rules and orders, which I'm very familiar with. So I'll find out. I don't know. In the 14 months that you've lived in Depot Bay, have you been involved in any Thing that's going on in Depot Bay? No, I'm, uh, I'm a renter uh, where I live, and the Homeowners Association doesn't allow renters to vote. Uh, we have three, year, two years left on our lease, and we already have a spot picked out in Depot Bay uh, to move to uh, if we decide to move. But it'll be within the confines, within the city limits of Depot Bay. And, uh, so we've been kind of limited on what we could do in the city. I mean, we tend to stand and bake and things like that. But uh, short of that, no. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for putting your name out there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. well, your uh, second applicant is uh, Kathy Wyatt. Your address, name, address, Laura. Kathy Wyatt, 215 Nesting Glade, Depot Bay, 97341. How are you guys? Good. Good. So, Kathy, why is it that you want to be on the city council? I want to be part of an amazing team that I think is on this council and share the vision and go forward with making this town better than it already is. I like to do this question though. What have you, you've been here for a few years, I think it's four years I've been here, mm -hmm. three. Um, what have you done to integrate into the community? Well, I have a granddaughter who goes to Taft High. Um, for the last three years, I was busy with um, my husband who had cancer, who passed away this Christmas. So not a lot of time to focus on the community. And so that's why I am, you know, starting a, a new chapter in my life and wanting to get out there and be part of the community. Well, that being said, I'm sorry to hear about your husband. But uh, you. that being said, it gives you a lot of extra time to uh, do you say mother. men take time? Pardon? Do you say <laughs> husbands take time? Did you they sure do. Head? No, I did not read it. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, that being said, uh, that gives you a lot of time to direct your uh, energies to other things. And I do work full time, which I absolutely adore my job, um, which gets me out into the community. 
to all the communities, Equal Bay, Lincoln City, Newport, to where I can interact with people. Um, I worked for FedEx for 25 years, which I actually adored that job also, but was given a great opportunity to retire early, and that's why we moved here. So yes, I do have a lot of time. I am still raising. My granddaughter is uh, a senior in high school, and then she'll go on to college, so I'll be an empty nester. Do we have other questions, please? Well, yeah. Yeah, the president of Homeowners Association 2002 to 2006, was that? No, it was in Salt Lake City. It was a, a Homeowners Association called La Montaigne. There were 14 homes. And um, I was proud to say that during my time there, that we, because it's really hard to have a homeowner association, especially with a small one, because the money's tight, and because it was private, you really had to be careful with your money and to incorporate the whole neighborhood. Not only did we become a neighborhood, but we came, we, we became a family of a neighborhood, which is, you know, how neighborhoods should be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Kathy, I think that's it. This is the easiest thing ever. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. sticking that back with us. Your organizations, please come in the community, get involved, and we'd love to have you help. You got uh, another city council election coming up too another year, so I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be on the ballot. Yeah. One of those, I can't, yeah. I can't stay on it over fall. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, guess, I think that's where everything happens. Good. Right. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Are we free to leave then? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations and condolences. I'm excited. Thank you for the opportunity. Look forward to it. Thanks, Steve. Good night, everyone. Good night. Yeah, I'm going to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> 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 On item six, reports of officers, boards, our standing committees. Uh, 
uh, Jeff Molfino, 923 Southeast Bay Boulevard, Newport. All right, we were in uh, the section earlier and discussing the pros and cons of the lease uh, and your requirements or requests, I guess I should say. Yeah. For the most part, is we said yes. Okay. There, there's still there, there's um, the, the main issue, I guess, Jeffrey, is the uh, personal guarantee or the bond. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we had our staff uh, do a little research on the bond, and uh, apparently they're not easy to come by here in the state. Something about the state law. I, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, we were looking for ways to get around that. To, Mm -hmm. Consider your request for not signing a personal guarantee. And so, um, what we came up with is in lieu of a personal guarantee, in lieu of a bond, because it looks like it may be difficult for you to obtain that bond, we would look for a deposit of, say, two months at the uh, t uh, execution of lease, then your first month's due. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would work. I, I, I did meet with my insurers today uh, because. Um, Needless to say, I'm chomping at the bit. Time is running short, yes. and so I, I instructed them to get up, get the the policy requirements ready and everything. And she in, she didn't indicate um, the only thing that was said from the bonding company was that they weren't quite sure uh, what type of bond we were looking for. And I basically that's, indicated, that's, yeah, that's you know, there was a performance bond awesome. and based on and so, uh, but um, if you're comfortable with with that, I am also. And I'm not trying to be difficult, it's just that in, in my business life, uh, everybody that I hire to help me says, uh, uh, don't, don't sign personal guarantees anymore, and it kind of defeats the whole point of having a separate entity. And in essence, you know, uh, when you sign the lease, you're, you're in essence signing a personal guarantee in a way, you know, so. Uh, and I have a 100% track record of paying all my bills on time forever, and so. Forever, really? Some of those have been painful uh, payments, but um, and I do understand the city's exposure and, and fear level because there's been uh, a little bit of a history of not getting all the money you had due. So, so anyway, that that would be a, a, a solution that's workable for me. Okay. And the other, I'm sorry. I was just going to say about the. Um, the weight limits and the loading mm -hmm. and your comments, mm -hmm. your comments are all well taken. And mm -hmm. so what we thought maybe would be an appropriate course of action is to uh, take that engineering diagram mm -hmm. that has the weight limits for each section and attach it to the document. Okay. And that way if the building falls in and there's a subrogation, you yeah. know, if it's overloaded, then that, you know, that's going to go. Right. Well, just, just know it's, it's, it's obviously not to my advantage to have an issue either. And yes. I did talk with Dave uh, Kripp the other day because I um, uh, I wanted, I, I, because he is someone that you guys are familiar with and working with, I wanted to, you know, keep him in the loop and what my thoughts were. And we had a short discussion about that. And if there are, if any point will come up in, in the use that we would discuss, you know, addressing that point load with, with the installation of columns or, or structure like that. And I do have a long background in construction and so I'm, I'm, uh, I, I know what I'm looking at. So, uh, and I, at this point in time, I don't think our use upstairs is gonna be particularly intense uh, um, other than office space and, and, and using that area that will make a HACCP area. You had also, um Put in the styrofoam box storage, and, and in this lease it says no storage. Okay. So what we did is we took that out. Okay. We no storage manufacturing, and as long as it's free. Okay. Well, we are we are leasing the building next door also in this in this endeavor, and so uh, that gives us storage there also. So. Good. Well, in any case, uh, Mr. Wolfino. And uh, any change of these load limits, I have to be run by uh, Dave Prim. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, I, I talked with him, and and, and, and I, I spoke with Brady too, so I'm aware that we need to communicate on any of this stuff. Right? I guess 
past that. You have you have some too. No, no, no. You know, for the most no. part, there's a little housekeeping changes there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which we agreed to. The changes you asked for, okay. no problem. We okay. agreed to them. Okay. So except we're ready except to... for number four. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that? Except for number four. Right. That's the one about replace for any or no cause with the same language. Okay. We, you understand what I'm driving at there. Just you know, I know that in, in uh, maybe I get obsessive on contracts because I've been involved in them in my life. But it, you know, I just uh, it just seems to be a headlock in a way. But I guess I'll just have to live with that. Huh? Okay. <laughs> this is basically just a matter of getting it approved by city council. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't foresee asking for anything unreasonable. And I don't foresee that you would react reasonably. So. Mm -hmm. So, but on that point of unreasonability, is how how quickly do you suppose we could, if we made our deposits and got our policies in place, how quickly do you suppose we might be able to get started with within them? these documents being signed? Okay. How long is it going to take you to again? Not very long. Um, okay. But, but no, he's he's just mentioned um, insurance mm -hmm. and the certificates of insurance and the other thing you mentioned. The, <laughs> the, 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 the deposits of the yeah. rents. Yeah. Um, Normally, we, we like to start a month on the first of the month, but I understand there, there's a the sense of urgency. So if it's all right with the council, and I don't know if this, the 15th of this month, go from the middle of the month to the middle can of the you, month. Can you have your insurance and everything in line by then? I think so. I mean, I, I, I didn't hear anything to the, to the opposite of that today. I mean, you know, I, your insurance I, companies is basically if you give them a check, they'll give you the coverage. So that's true. Yeah, I, I would think by the 15th yeah. or as soon okay. as, as all of his insurance mm -hmm. So then we'll do two months of a deposit and then the first month's rent is half a month's rent. Well, we'll yeah. prorate pro 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 the yes. first month's rent so okay. that he actually takes possession. Okay. okay. Does that Agreed. make sense? Yeah, perfect. perfect. Do you need a, you need a motion to that? Yeah, I just uh, I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Sure. I need to uh, on the, uh, the, the fish carcass that's generated by our sport fishery, mm -hmm. I'd like to find out your plans to help, possibly help with that as far as uh, selling uh, bait to the crab fisheries, and uh, that would be one thing. Uh, we actually have uh, a detailed sheet with the weights, or with the amounts of waste there are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we thought that would be helpful to you. Well, I, I uh, obviously in our discussions all along on this, I will do what we can, and the uh, part of the refrigeration systems that we're putting in, I'm, I, I, I met with my refrigeration guy for a good period of time yesterday down there going over what we hope to do, and uh, the the container down there, uh, we're going to put a put a system on that. We'll allow us to blast and hold freeze. And so that would allow us to take carcass right away and knock it down in temperature and then be able to uh, put it away. The, the, uh, the need for the blast freezer is pretty important on that because most holding freezers, if you put a lot of stuff in that's, that's, that's room temperature and wet, you, you kill your condenser right away. And I, my, the freezer I have in Newport, I was letting the, some guys use it while I wasn't using it off season here, and they put 10,000 pounds of fresh tuna in it and uh, <laughs> locked it up and left. And, and wow. you know, a couple hours later, the alarms are going off and they cooked the system for moisture. And so, we're addressing that by uh, we'll put a, 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 a dual, dual function compression. So that, that'll also address the problem of, uh, of uh, shooting. Um, uh, shaved ice into the vessel. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm. The other discussion I have with him is he, he. Th there is a system that's probably right now. The ice machines I have are not equipped with that, but we did discuss uh, a system that he uh, has done quite a bit of uh, research and stuff on that would allow that would be that type of machine. He was going to get back to me on what that budget is, but uh, yeah, we we uh, got to have that. Okay, well, uh, it, it, in the very beginning here, unless, unless that system's available quickly, it'll be the way I'm doing now, which is two machines that are dropping in, into totes and 
and, and the ice, I use a tremendous amount of ice on the crab. I, I go through uh, eight or ten totes a day just chilling down low. So, so you're so, bringing a chipper unit with you? Yeah, I'll have two. Actually, what I intend to do is that little concrete block enclosure that's outside the building. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put both machines on top of that and make that into a hopper mm -hmm. uh, initially. But I do like the idea of having, you know, the auger system and stuff. Uh, and this one's apparently a, uh, a relatively compact machine that probably can fit on, on the end of the dock where that, that keyway is out for the possible ramp in the future. But it could sit in that area probably to reach vessels. So. You know, I talked to him. And not be right in the way. I mean, we're pretty narrow in there you know, for the hoist. And so uh, I, I think it needs to be out of the hoist area in order to. I uh, spoke with one of your potential customers last week. And uh, we were talking in general what the fishing fleet really needs mm -hmm. from that plant. And from that conversation, and again, this is just a conversation right mm -hmm. now, uh, Mr. D. Beloy, Dave D. Beloy, yeah, Dave, yeah. Um, had suggested that uh, either you have to have almost a five ton ice maker to main the peak season here when we do tuna for the charters and all that, or have to have plenty of storage mm -hmm. so you can chip ahead and get ready for mm -hmm. it. So, that, and what you're proposing is going to have that kind of capacity? Well, right now, the, the, the two machines I have are, create about 5,000 pounds in, in, in 24 hours. Two and a half tons. Yeah. And so this other machine, and, and uh, admittedly, we just started discussing yesterday, so I don't have all of the details on it yet, but my intention would be to move in that direction because um, I'm constantly worried I'm not going to have enough ice. And, right. and uh, the situation in Newport is, is that they won't even talk about it. <laughs> so... And it, when I first started this business, I drove to up to uh, Garibaldi. I drove down to Coos Bay, you know, Pauly Heights, and that, those are the two closest sources other than your own mm -hmm. machine. So, so anyway, I, I I can see that it's a it's a key uh, function. So I can get back with you as soon as I have details on it. But it and sounds I, like it's a. I only have one more question to ask you, and I'll just be quiet. Um, um, you're, you're going to start, be ready for crab season, and mm -hmm. that's the plan to send it first. Um, gee, I just lost my train of thought, I'm sorry. It was important in that second, during the evening season, I'm sorry. I just, I was just, you know, in this contract, it, it talks about commercial fishermen. I just want to make sure that this includes charter boats. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I haven't, you know, because this process has been prolonged and uh, not a sure thing until recently, I haven't gone out and spent the time to talk to people because I found uh, that within the fishing community, going out and, and getting hopes up early is not a good thing to do. And so uh, it's my intention now that we're at the point where we're now to uh, talk to everybody that's in the harbor and let them know what our plans are and get input on that. And uh, um, I think we're all on the same page with it. I just. Uh, Spurred my memory. You know, we're going to be talking about rent credits and equipment. Mm -hmm. and when approximately you're going to get with us to give us a submission on that type of detail? Well, I probably the the equipment in, involved will primarily be the refrigeration type things because it, 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 although I did just pull some of it out of a building in California that I had. Uh, it reminded me why you don't want to do that because when I install it, I actually we even in, inset the freezer into the floor, mm -hmm. and so it was real <laughs> pain in the neck to get the floor out of the floor. But uh, so it would be things like that. And I, uh, with the discussion yesterday of, uh, with my refrigeration guy, I'll I'll, I'll uh, push that along and as soon as we can. I, I'm not looking to pile it all on at once or, or anything like that. I think that. Um, uh, obviously, if I were wealthy, I wouldn't be doing this, and so money is an issue, but uh, I also know that the city's got to have some return out of this, too, so I'm not looking to front load anything particularly, uh, So, but I will get on it and, and present, you know, what I see as possible, and then we'll arm wrestle with that. Do you think that would be before December 1st? Uh, I, yeah, I can, yeah, I should be able to have something, you know, that's uh, some of it, you know, it'll, um, 
Well, for instance, like this ice machine, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know what the city's feeling will be about that. I mean, that will obviously be an expenditure that I don't have any idea what it is exactly at this point, and whether or not it would be something that you would consider installed or not once it's in place. Uh, we just have to find out. So, so, yeah, so, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get a, a preliminary situation together as quick as I can. Mr. Mayor. The motion, please. Yes. I move that um, that we approve the lease with the edits as discussed in executive session and then here in open session with Mr. Malfino and uh, staff prepare the lease and other documents um, with a date of October 15th, unless that turns out to be uncomfortable for Mr. Malfino, I think we can be a little bit flexible. Well, I, I, that's okay with I you, think October fine, yeah. um, 15th, and authorize the mayor to sign the lease on behalf of the city. Second. Any other discussion on this? Call, please. <clears throat> Mapla. Yes. Gambino. Yes. Potter. Yes. Left. Yes. Also. Yes. One last little thing. I, I'm also in discussion with the electric guys. Uh, we're probably going to have to increase uh, power. Uh, yes. Yeah, because it's fairly tight, and some of the the chillers and whatnot that I'll also have in there for chilling the water system when we need it. Uh, are adding to that also. And then the discussion on additional ice machine and additional freezer power for the, uh -huh. so, uh, so if you see them sniffing around, that's what that's, what that's about. Four, 400 amps we have in there now, that's not adequate? Um, it has been repaired. I don't know if you've seen the new. Uh, well, I, I'm, yeah, no, I, I did, but I, I going, and this is, strictly on preliminary discussions with them, they were indicating 30 horsepower was about the max. Well, uh, I'm pretty close to that already, you know, with, with uh, not continuous running, but, you know, if we, if we, once our water system is in for holding the live, if, if we're running all the chillers and the freezers running and the coolers running and, you know. It, can, can you refresh my memory on that? What is the, for horsepower, what is the, uh amperage requirement. I don't, re I don't recall that. Well, it, 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 that each unit's got its own, you know, its own rating, and so it, it, the, it's also the amperage of the motor start and, and well, all I, that. I, I don't is, have that in my head. Yeah, but, I understand that. There, yeah. is a, uh, there is a formula for the amperage. Yeah. For, well, that's why I'm involving. Troy Troy is the engineer that's coming down. I, I guess he's their main engineer. Right. That's, and, uh, what's, their, what's their status? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. There's four-aught mains that come in, yeah, and then uh, the right. in the ground. So there, there's enough power there. We have to do a, uh, all. What it would be is it, it, when we're changing in the building, it may change the transformers yeah. out on the pole yeah. to be able to handle. Yeah, it's energy. already three phase. Yeah, no, it, it's not the voltage. It's, it's more the amperage supply. Right, right. Uh -huh. Anyway, well, that's why we'll be at Western Spaces. And PUD. Yeah. yeah, PUD is who I'm meeting with on oh, Thursday yeah. morning. Yeah. Well, those, are, those are the guys with the answers anyway. Yeah, yeah Troy Dale yeah. would be the guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, good luck. Well, thanks. Thank you, it's been a fun pushing the rock up the hill here. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. Right, thank you. Mr. Molfino, thank you. All right. So, uh, as far as the church, I just run stuff for you and for you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll see you soon. Sure. And I'll work on the keys. Alrighty, thanks. Thanks, okay. Jeff. Thank you. All right, on to new business. Docks and filing replacement project. Request for proposals for preliminary preliminary engineering services. Mm -hmm. And we really need that to get put together. Yeah. Right. It, what what staff needs is a motion. Direction from the council. The Urban Renewal Agency Board um, has supported, uh, actually the motion was to, to start this process. 
directly focusing on engineering services, uh, preliminary engineering with associated costs for the DOCS, DOCS 224. Um, the City Council would be the agency entering into that contract. So I know this is a formality, but we need the City Council to move to direct staff to pull that RFP together. I know that they're, the work on pulling the draft together has started, um, but we really need that formal so go good. get it. Now. Second. So, so it was direct staff to get the RFP put together. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to see the RFP? The Actually, uh, we're going to go into discussion. I'd like to discuss okay. for engineering. Yeah. It's for engineering, it's for the docks, for yeah. the pilots. Yeah. Is it also for the, um, uh, the uh, uh, invasive species wash? Mm -hmm. Does this have anything uh, to do with that? Um, no. Oh, no. 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 uh, well, I There's granite and green. Well, I'm just wondering this is that. Wouldn't that qualify for an urban No. no. Okay. So, and then also, we've got the grant opportunities for that. Yes. Well, they, yeah. 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 Purchase the basic species. Uh, this uh, other item that uh, may be part of that block uh, and filing thing. And when I met with uh, Senator Wyden this last uh, LOC meeting, uh, we talked about his uh, problems that they were having with the breweries and, and uh, disposing of their uh, grains that were left over from the process of brewing. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to them about it, I told them we had plenty of grain through, but uh, also that they were fish carcasses. So that's why he really became interested in it mm -hmm. and that. And so I don't, I don't know if we could maybe get some of that money for, for the uh, uh, setting up a, uh, a plant that would recycle our carcasses. Right. The same, and what, did you guys all get this thing about the puff factory? Yes. Yeah. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, what they were doing up there at, uh, was using the fruit uh, in the, uh, in the area of, uh, the river and reprocessing that and what they were doing with it was making it into a, a product that is uh, as a 25 year longevity that can be used for uh, like our uh, little storage units out here in case of emergency. Right. But uh, in the case of the, of the fish carcass, the thing there is that uh, it's going to placate the environmentalists as well because we'll have this product that instead of being dumped into a landfill is being uh, recycled and used uh, effectively and that even some of it might even end up in China of all places mm -hmm. for fertilizing and, and uh, whatnot. Well it'll be interesting to see if we're both, you know, more information right. about yeah. that. So I'd like to, uh, in this motion, I'd like to include this possibility of funds for uh, looking into this uh, uh, Yeah, but that's a whole different thing. thing. That's not, yeah. This is the urban renewal project. We can't mix. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'd like to expand on that just a little bit. Um, I get what you're saying. I, I didn't think about that about the wash station, but <clears throat> we're going to do the docks. We know that they have to be done. And we know that we're going to have to do something with what he's talking about, the fish waste. And we know we're going to have to do something with the invasive species wash. We're going to have to mm -hmm. do it. So I'm wondering, um, since we're going to an engineer, if maybe we can just have him attach, like, well, if we do this kind of engineering on this wash station, it's going to cost, you know, this is what we propose. I wonder if we can just have something along with what we're doing. Is, or does that make some apples and oranges? I don't know, but there's a real legal issue there. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer. I, I, have I, I, some, I suspect that no, we can't because of the urban renewal funds. Yeah. They're very specific. You know, I know. I just, we could research those two other all, items. All this, all this is right now is just for 
in the parking lot. Right. 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 But the thing but is, that's we're going to ask for Once we get that preliminary engineering, if we decide that we want to add some of these other things into the actual project, right. that yeah. would be done afterwards yeah. outside yeah. of the review. Exactly. Right. Okay. I get you. Okay. Right. I did, I'm so, with that. Go ahead. I did find out in some research dealing with the fish carcasses that if they're frozen, they're more marketable. So I, I noticed Jeffrey was talking about flash freezing. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. something we need to research and get into. Yeah. Okay. In addition, so we can get, come back to these other yeah. projects. Okay. Yeah. In addition, um, the rest of that, the both fish carcasses, I think, and the uh, uh, species, both, species both flash, um, that, that would be, since it's not so urgent, as the, as the urgency we decided on the box, that should probably go to the new committee. Yeah, that works too. And also, these other two items are going to be going to the Oregon Marine Board as well. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Strike that. Call the question. Uh, we need a motion on this. Uh, we have a motion. We have a motion. We just got a vote. Okay, call okay. Gambino? Yes. Potter? Yes. Left? Yes. Olson? Yes. Macla? Yes. Okay, I'll pose a question. Do you do you want to see the draft RFP? Do you want the staff to get it together, finalize it, bring it back to the next meeting for you to approve or Larry and uh bring her in on this, right? I'll just I'd say go yeah, for just it. Go for Let's it. get it out there because we have some money to go collect. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you, great. <laughs> Correspondence? Two items of correspondence. Um, one is Lincoln County's uh, announcement of the grant opportunity for the Lincoln County Community and Economic Development Fund. Um, applications are due on Election Day, November 4th. We have, through this grant program, we have benefited greatly through the years. And um, I would re ask the council tonight if you would schedule um, this item for the next regular council meeting um, to determine whether we're going to submit an application this, this round and what project it would be for. Um, That's fine. Yeah. We'll be thinking about projects, review the budget. Um, this is outside the project where he's talking about here on the corner. We'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A I know it's not out. We haven't got an uh, answer yet from that. Okay. Um, we're still waiting on. I, you want to share? Brady had an sure. idea for a project that um, I agree with him. That would be, I think, a good uh, application for this particular grant fund, and that's to um, it involves the, the, the power shed, the power shed yeah. down at the harbor, and um, spill. Storage, 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 and then the rest is, is in the locked area outside in garbage, uh, contained as a waterproof. But uh, I think we could provide that, and if you use that funding, it wouldn't be, you know, it would cost the city. So we can use up to fifteen hundred. Well, you can. the The maximum the city can request for a project is fifteen thousand right. um, dollars. Anyway, that's just one one example. So kind of think about projects, um, and if we can schedule it for the next agenda for yeah. your decision and that gives us time to get the application yeah. in. Stuff we really didn't budget in, but things that maybe have occurred that we're seeing needs to be addressed. Um, well we could do more than one project at fifteen thousand is that the you can, we you can submit that? one application for one project. Uh -huh. The most the maximum dollars you can ask for is fifteen thousand. Oh. Well, we've had years in the past where we've only asked for five thousand. Emergency is a good area to get into. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't think we have any trouble covering 15,000 no. with the reconstruction of the shed now. 
plus construction of what would probably end up being at least the size of, of the original shed. Yeah, plus, the, yeah. plus the emergency equipment to put in there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Having the, you know, graphic example, similar picture of that truck in the harbor. Mm -hmm. Graphic yes. example as to why these things need to be right down yeah, there in the absolutely. harbor. So next agenda, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, the only other item of correspondence I have is an email from the mayor of Newport. And she um, says, this is to keep you in the loop regarding the action Newport is taking after receiving the news about the closure of the US Coast Guard Air Station. If any of you would like to join in regarding this issue, please do so. Mm -hmm. And attached is a copy of, of, of the letter that the city of Newport sent to Representative Gomberg, Senator Roblin, U.S. Senator Merkley, U.S. Representative Schrader, and Lincoln County Commissioners. So this is a mayor of a neighboring city asking well, this council if they would be interested in I'm writing a letter. <laughs> I think we all agree that it's, I think it's a necessity to have the air station yeah. uh, available close, yeah. in close proximity like Newport. The only other yeah. one available, if I'm not mistaken, is Astoria. Astoria and North Bend. But the Astoria and North Bend at both ends of the state, mm -hmm. Newport's the only one in the central yeah. location. Right. It's, it, again, um, it's a no was demonstrated this summer when that boat capsized out there 30 miles mm -hmm. offshore. Had that helicopter not been there and picked those guys up, they would have died before the boats could have got them here. Absolutely. Their core temperature was 86 degrees when they pulled them out of the water. That's true. And they would have died. It is, I, I just can't, I mean, when I read this, I, I couldn't believe it. How can we can't do this? We also have to remember that we have uh, <laughs> the largest uh, fishing port in the, in, on the West Oregon coast, plus NOAA and all their facilities too. So this is just a no-brainer to endorse Senator Romago's request. So somebody would like to make a motion, I'd be eternally grateful. I would like to make a motion that we draft a letter similar to Sandy's, San, Sandra's letter and address them to at least uh, all the people that she has included. Except you'll spell Depot Bay's name correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, for sure. Depot Bay. Depot. Second. Call, please. Goddard. Yes. Left. Yes. Olson. Yes. Mathala. Yes. Gambino. Yes. We don't have any more correspondence. That is all I have. Could I ask uh, a question about something that came in, which is the sheriff's report, what September the, activity report? What I was am, the spare change we were being charged? Well, Never mind the spare change. This is the second time. time in a row that they essentially have not done what they contracted to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I was reading the other day about what has happened since Toledo has uh, evaporated their police support mm -hmm. for Celeste and the Sheriff's Department is stretched. I forget the man hours exactly, but it's all being sucked over to selects, and that's why they've not been here, I suspect. I know it's not our issue. Yeah. Our issue is, do we want to do something about it? Well, I, I don't see a problem with somebody just picking up the phone like the mayor saying, hey, Mr. Dodson, what's going on, dude? I don't know if you'd say it that way. Well, we, we should address the, uh, the original agreement, and uh, if they're in a position they can't handle that, then we'll have to make some kind of an adjustment. That's the way I see it. So, would you uh, address uh, the sheriff's office and find out what their plan is in the future, and then we'll deal with it? I will. Um, I know that they have been in recent months. Uh, very short staff, very short handed. I don't know how much longer it's going to go on. So I, I, I'll get some information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is essentially three months. I'm curious. 
curious if there's been an uptick in problems. I'm not for sure if in the area. In other words, one of those efficacy is as far as the performance of the duties. It really makes a difference. Well, we still get, did we still get the law enforcement report? Do we still oh, get the sheriff's the monthly yeah. report? We don't. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why? I'm not sure. Well, why, why don't you call and request, mm -hmm. with the council's yeah. permission, you'd Just like to, to have it. Just the numbers to see if we're paying for something that's effective or not. I, I think, I, my sense is it is effective. My sense is, but I don't know about it. Okay. Well, good. Officer Davies is president. He's our force deputy, but he spends a lot of the time in the camp, but it's, he's got a big area to cover. Right. He's mainly going off the beaten path. And our, our contract with that, with them, only uh, requires, how do I say, we only pay for what we get, right? That's not correct. They're not covered through that Yes, it is for our. Yes, it is for our. Those are the best thing to do then. Uh, is just get a hold of them and find out what their plan is and then we'll act accordingly. Sounds good. I'll do that. Yeah. Maybe this is uh, might end up being a good time for discussion on the justice system and police agency in Eagle Bay. Mm -hmm. Good point. I like that. City staff report, please. So in, you first. Me go first? Okay, um, just would like to brief you on the status of the franchises. Um, tomorrow night is a Central Lincoln PUD board meeting. There might be some revisions. We, the, our attorney's been working with their attorney on, on, on that franchise renewal. Um, there might be some new information coming out of tomorrow night's board meeting. Other than that, we should have um, a draft ordinance for renewal of that franchise ready for the next agenda, the October 21st meeting. On the front of the WAVE franchise, after a long lull in communication and response back from them, we finally have gotten one. They have a new attorney on board. She has picked up the ball, and we're moving forward on that one, finally. Finally. Now, the Northwest Gas franchise uh, expires this coming month of November. And so we'll be starting to work on that one. And then the Century Tell, the, the telephone one expires January 1. So a lot of franchise activities. But I, I'm really um, happy that we got ways to get back to us, because it was a long lull. They were just not responsive. But with this new attorney, she's, she's moving on. And, like I said, hopefully, I mean, unless something really unusual comes out of tomorrow night's board meeting, we'll be moving ahead with the adoption process on the PUD franchise at the next meeting. Is that going to have the provision for penalties for not paying on time? Is that going to Yes, yes. Um, yes. All of the, you know, it's been a while, but all of the um, uh, items and issues and points that you requested have been put into the mix and have been negotiated and uh, so in that area there's some tweaks but you'll, you'll certainly get the draft um, at least a week before the next meeting. So. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I'd like to know is um, we still have one opening on the Planning Commission, we have two openings on the Sand Enhancement, we're looking for people to serve on the Harbor Master Plan Advisory Committee we have received no applications. It closes again on next week, Thursday, the 16th. So anybody you know that might be interested, just encourage them to apply. Why don't we call Bob? <laughs> Why don't we call Bob, who was here tonight? Yeah. I can call him. Why not? Probably ought to know something about the harbor. I think. You know, I thought we would interject something here. Um, like we were kind of waiting for the charter boat skippers mm -hmm. to wind down. Right. Well, that hasn't happened quite yet. Yeah. You know, with the weather we've been having and the, when the ocean conditions, and it, it hasn't it hasn't wound down like it usually does in October. Mm -hmm. So you think we should just push that another month to the I, I would. Mm -hmm. Well, in the meantime, we have we have it out there. It's posted closing date October 16th. If you're running anybody in. 
very confusing. Can we extend the closing mm -hmm. date? Absolutely. If we don't get any applications by the 16th, we'll repost them. Okay. Absolutely. I discussed uh, this problem with uh, two different uh, people just uh, actually it was two days ago. Mm -hmm. And I have two people that will be interested in applying. And uh, uh, they're away from town right now, but they'll be back next week. So we'll have a couple of prospective uh, people there. Okay, good enough. Just wanted to mention it because the, the planning commission seat has been vacant for Uh, just a quickie, uh, yeah, Bob, Bob Davis, who was here. Uh, come to the voting oh, I'm sorry, Park. I'm Steve Sparks, 228 Southwest Nesting Lake. <clears throat> I'd be happy to encourage Bob Davis, who was just here, to apply for that planning commission spot. Yeah, good point. That's not a name, it was Lewis. Lewis. It was Lewis. 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 Is underway. I'm meeting with the uh, engineers tomorrow, and we're getting it kicked off. Uh, and we're going to just dig right in. I've got a lot of time on my plate uh, tomorrow, just set just for them, so we can discuss a lot of options and how we're going to move forward with this. So. Is Mark Schneider going to attend that meeting? Uh, you know, not right. What, what I'll do is probably you know take notes and then fill Mark in as far as. But this is more of a, the construction design and what our options are. Right. Right. Yes, definitely. I'm going to keep him in the loop, forwarding, uh, keep him in uh, CC, different emails and whatnot. So he's, he's on board with what's going on. Okay, so that's with the, this divorce name. Um, downtown striping, I was working on striping all the park, just buying the parking all through downtown. We did the uh, south of the bridge. Then with the contractor, unfortunately, the striping equipment ended up in the bay. That was the truck. So uh, it's been delayed a little bit. So he's about a third done with it, but he's waiting for equipment and insurance stuff. But anyway, so that's why that's delayed. But I was hoping to get it before the rain started and we'd get a good coverage of uh, all the striping and parking. But what we have done, I've got really good positive uh, thank yous from the downtown. So we just got to finish that, and I think, you know, it'll be a long time. Okay, um, at the water plant, uh, we've been doing some budget projects with uh, the turbine pumps. There's three of them in our pump room there, and what these turbine pumps do is pump the finished water up to the clear wells on the, on the mountain. There's a big tank, there's a million point two gallons, and there's about 750,000 gallon tanks. Um, these turbine pumps have been in place since 1993 and they, 94, right in there, a little over 20 years. They have never really had any work done to them. They're, they're workhorses, but um, we had the motors um, rebuilt on one of them and come to find out that the pumping mechanism below these turbine pumps, um, there was a problem with them. So we, we pulled one and we're going to have it completely rebuilt and uh, it's uh, it was quite a sight. So we're going to have to maybe uh, take a couple of the water plant projects and maybe hold that hold off on that, like our plant cleaning, things that we, we, we can probably shuffle around. But we need to address all three of these pumps. And I have to do it one at a time. They're going to end up in Portland, get rebuilt, and then come back. Um, because of the chance of if I take two at a time and one and then it goes out, we don't have a lot of So yeah. they're, they're quite viable. So we're gonna, it's, it's, I really don't have a number right now because we don't know how bad they really are, but it's, it's some, you know, $2,000 we're looking at, you know, in, in just the uh, company's time. I've got a couple of bids from uh, um, Coast Range and Equipment. 
and he's working on it right now. I just approved it all just to get it moving forward. And he's like our in-house pump repair guy at Newport. So that was really, really important that we did. It was just one of those things where we started one, get into it, and it just snowballed into replacing everything. So got to do that. Um, the uh, Gurry Green is finished that uh, the mayor was concerned about most of the summer. We did finally finish the, uh, the drain for the fish waste that, that uh -huh. runs on the sidewalk out there along the curb. It smells so bad. Yeah, I saw so that. The Gurry Green is in, and Eric and I finished that on our own. Went down there and grabbed all those the drain tiles, and it's really working well so far. If we get water, just wash right down, and it's not right. easy. It's right. cut in half. So yeah, that's a needed improvement. Thank you. Yes, that, it, and it turned out really good. We're going to fix the berm. We get blacktop. Um, we got some blacktop to do right down potholes and stuff, so we'll finish the berm. And uh, the jib is uh, going to be installed the week of the 13th. It's um, just about finished. Um, the company's going to come remove the old one and place the new one, and they're going to bring their own forklift. And that's. Uh, that's almost done. So with the fish plant, really, there's nothing left. If we get that jib done, the water is done. We're just uh, uh, tying in uh, up, up at the top of the, the hill in front of the smokehouse is where the meter is. So once our crew ties that in, and we get the jib in, then our, everything on our list is pretty much accomplished. So that's fortunate. So that's about it. Other than I. If you notice we took the barn down, uh, that lean to it was quite rotten, and uh, good thing we did take it down when we did. But uh, I'm getting a fair field design, they're drawing up plans for us. I, I did call Al Eames, the, the, the county inspector, lead inspector, and he, he did suggest that we uh, get a, a, someone to draw our, the plans up rather than do it in house because it's municipal and it's the age of the building and, and whatnot. And, Probably a better idea to have, and it really wasn't that costly. It's going to be somewhere around nine, nine hundred to a thousand dollars, maybe just get the, the drawings. So I went ahead and okayed that. So that's happening. In regards to that, Brady, uh, uh, are you thinking about building a barn that will cover that entire area back there? Well, or that, it, or that other storage, at least to the other storage shed, not quite that far, but it's going to it's going to enclose the emergency response trailer with all the radios and that, that we can communicate with Salem. It's all self-contained. It's now currently at the wastewater plant, uh -huh. and well, it gets exercised by Michael Dean about once a month. He's been kind of ill here lately, uh -huh. but it is exercised. the point being that uh, <clears throat> when you put up a building uh, of that size. It costs just minimally more to double the size. Yeah. So I was thinking we might as might as well if we're going to put up the building. Let's let's do it with the area that we have to put it on. Yeah, we we're going to try to match the pitch of the original roof design, drop it down a little so it looked like a, a good addition, and then uh, match the side. We can match the siding, the, the T11, and the roof roofing. Um, but yes, we're going to probably have to do a retaining wall. There's a big pine tree behind that we took down. Yeah. Um, so it's moving forward. And I think uh, having someone design it with uh, a firewall and all kinds of uh, engineering designs that we probably couldn't do or I couldn't draw it up. So that was my intention was to try to cut the cost by having us draw it up. It, it's, well, let's, oh, do it. Going yeah, let's do it right. It's going to be there a long time. Absolutely. So anyway, that's where we're at, and uh, that's kind of it right now on our, on our report. So. Well, Perry, at the risk of overlooking, <laughs> do you have anything else? I, I don't, but thanks for asking. Oh, thank you. No. I didn't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Can you some comments, please? Thank you. Phil's got something he wants to say. Oh, well. I speak from here. Yeah. There that suggestion on the helicopter situation, if that looks like it's going against what we would like to have happen, uh, possibly calling a town hall meeting of town hall people uh, and invite the Coast Guard in to 
speak to us as to what they are doing. This work once before when they were getting ready to move the whole station to Newport. And we we'll give the fishermen a chance, the charter people, a chance to address the whole situation. That's a good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. Council comments? Go ahead. My, uh, my only comment was just on that very same subject. I just thought that uh, Sandra's letter was almost too kind and too short. I'd like to see ours a little more fortified and maybe a little lengthier. Some examples, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that example from this summer is very telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. That, that uh, example from the summer, we had two helicopters out there. I think one of them was from North Bend. That's what I didn't hear. I think one of the help, we had two helicopters out there. Uh -huh. I think one of them was from North Bend. I'm not sure. We'd have to check on, on that for sure. Um, but I, I do know that had they not responded when they did, those guys would have been dead. You're talking about the two of the accident. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree, 100%. And one's better than two. I mean, the, the second one obviously is a backup, but if we can only have one, that's better than nothing. It's, it's at least an hour yeah. flight. To get to us. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Comment? Mm -hmm. I'd just like everybody to know that our salmon, salmon enhancement program um, was graphically displayed in North People Big Creek today. We had spawning salmon. Wow. Came in, spawned, and died right there. Wow. That's pretty cool. I mean, oh, okay. well, that's more than one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's all we saw. Yeah, yeah. that's what we saw. They, they have to run the gamut of all kinds of the seals that are taking up residence in the channel now. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Freddie Yeck. That was the city attorney. And then yeah. uh, the mayor at the time was Gene H. Quinn. Yep, yep. Second mayor. Pardon me? Second mayor in the town. Oh. And then uh, we had uh, Nellie Munson. And Graham Ainsley. And Steve Cottrell. And Ed. Anyway, so so that's what we have, and I'm I'm trying to get a fully executed document plus any other information. Yeah, so if that happens, we'll get that little self trick thing cleaned up. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> it does just tickle me to no end. The boys came in about two days ago, and uh, while they were tying up their boats, somebody noticed a salmon. So they broke out their fishing poles and they caught a silver right there by the fuel box. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I don't know catch any, any, or, I don't know if there's any regulations against that or not, but they did catch a salmon right there. <laughs> it was on his way over to the fish ladder to go up south. <laughs> they did turn it loose again, right? Pardon? They did turn it loose again. Of course they turned away. After they deployed it. Oh, that strike that from the right. <laughs> yeah, well that's the story I get. Yes, they did release it, so. All right, is there anything else? So we are adjourned at 15 minutes past eight.